Hello YouTube, welcome back to yet another quarantine edition build. I want to work on a little Mortimer here, I've got some work done on him. Uh, but first I want to tell you, I am one third of the trio of terror. We are the hardest working guys on YouTube right now. We are bringing you guys daily content. So go see my brothers, uh, Mick Springston at his channel and Dave at the Weird Kid Show channel. We're doing daily vlogs, daily builds, projects, updates, just to kind of get you guys away from the headlines of the madness for a little bit. So today I thought I would try and finish up my grave digger. I've got a little bit more work done on him. I've got a vest coming from Amazon. Don't know when the hell it's going to be here because of the zombie apocalypse. But I did go ahead and I took his hat. I'll show you guys. Uh, this is a, an Amazon Spanish flamenco hat. I went and coated the whole hat with a coat of uh, fiberglass resin so it's waterproof. Uh, so hopefully when he's out in the rain and the snow and the ice, because our Halloween's here in winter, we had two inches in the graveyard last year. So we get snow, ice, sleeting rain. So I just wanted it to hold up in the sun and in the rain. And since these are just flocked plastic hats, I went ahead and brushed everything with uh, fiberglass resin. I sprayed, um, it was a brown flat red primer in my hands in a, in a glove. And I just touched the hat all over the place. So I got a coat of brown on his hat. I molded up a little skull, which is uh, screwed in behind the hat. I made a band out of some old duck cloth that was left over from the uh, oh, the Apocalypse uh, War Belt build. Uh, now this stuff, the duck cloth is great because it's it's made for outside. It's like what the cornhole game bags are made out of and uh, like your overhead uh, umbrella shades are made out of. So it's good stuff. It's meant to be outside and it should lighten up over a couple of years of being outside. So I'm cool with that. Uh, I did want to go ahead and work finish them up today. I think I'm going to add a little feather in his head. I'm going to cut this feather down and put a little feather in his head. Seems like all the old guys have feathers on their hats for whatever damn reason. I don't know. Um, so I want to do that today. Uh, I did go ahead and I plastered his shirt with uh, Rip Dye. Um, Rip Dye, man. This stuff is, is awesome stuff. They sell it at Walmart. It's three bucks. Uh, it's by the dryer sheets and all that stuff. So you can take this, put a couple of spoonfuls of dye or a couple of ounces and pour it into a water bottle. You should get these at the dollar store and pour a little bit in the bottom, top the rest off with water. And man, you've literally got distressing in a bottle. And like I said, it comes in, shit, there's probably 31 flavors of this stuff. So you can pick whatever you want. Greens, purples, blues, blacks, anything. So I've got a bunch of bottles that I keep around for whatever projects I'm working on. This is purple. If you want to stain your stuff purple. Uh, I got yellow. But I love having this stuff on hand. I've got some gray. Is this the gray? Oh, this is blood red. All right. So you can make blood if you want or blood stains. And this red dye is pretty powerful stuff. It will stick to concrete. Um, so I do have some gray or I had some gray. Oh, here's my gray. The gray is kind of lighter. So I've been kind of pestering them. Just kind of giving them a blast here and there. Just stain up his shirt. You won't see much of it because I'm going to have an apron on them. Uh, I did go ahead and make a cover for his old turkey neck, like a little uh, bandana when he's digging bodies and digging holes. Uh, he can pull up around his neck, but it covers his little chicken neck and all the uh, the headless parts that when I bought the head from. So I'm pretty happy with this, and I just went ahead and good old swing line stapler. It's just stapled in the back in case I want to tear it apart and work on his head. Uh, his head is not glued. I can still move his head wherever I want, so I'm happy with that. So basically his torso part is up. I went ahead and I bought some gloves off Amazon. These are rose uh, pruner gloves. So they have this longer leather protection on the bottom. And they were real leather gloves. So I went ahead and I sanded them. I put them on. I sanded them. I uh, used a file on them. I scuffed them up. I grabbed some rocks. And then I went ahead and used, just dipped my fingers into a uh, black ebony dye or black ebony uh, wood stain. And I stained the hand so it kind of bit into all the little raw parts where I had pulled the leather away. And then I went ahead and filled the fingers of the gloves with a uh, hundred percent waterproof clock. And I put the gloves on the hands and stretched them down. It was a real pain in the ass. There was caulk in my beard. It was a freaking nightmare. I don't want to talk about it, but I got them on. So the hands are done. Uh, I'm happy with those over the years. They'll age and look even better. Um, so I think really just kind of small stuff. I want to work on Mortimer's jacket today and get that finished up. I'm going to pop his arm out. We've got to get his jacket on first so I can do them both at the same time. Uh, he does have his ring of keys on him. Uh, he's basically ready for his jacket. I'm going to do his little feather. I'm going to trim that back. I'm going to glue a little feather in his head with some E6000. And then I'm going to go get his jacket 
and do some uh, work on his jacket. So I'm gonna glue this feather in, and we come back, I'm gonna show you what I did to his, uh, his duster already. Looks pretty cool so far. So, I got Mortimer's jacket. Uh, what I did was, I uh, hung on the ladder, I took a pair of scissors, I cut every seam off of this jacket. Just made it a nice little ragged cut. The raggeder the better, because I wanted it to be all grimy and disgusting. Uh, over the back of his coat, his belt loops, everything. Did his sleeves. Um, and then, the easiest step was taking my uh, soldering iron gun. I just went ahead and my favorite method is just go ahead and twist it up and then lay it on there and burn a hole through and it'll start to burn other layers. That way you get more contact over the coat. So you're burning multiple things at one time while this thing is heating up in your hand. It's cool now, so I don't have to worry about it. But I just kind of went ahead and dragged it over everything. I kind of melted all of his seams. I just would twist it up, lay the barrel in there, put a hole in there, and then let it melt everything that touched it. Uh, once I got all the holes in the jacket, I just kind of smashed it on the driveway a bunch. I used the old wire brush, went over everything. That gets some of the little burny parts off. Um, and after that was basically just paint. I went ahead and took a dark uh, Rust-Oleum, I think this is a flat red primer, I think. Yeah, Rust-Oleum flat red primer. I blast all the holes. Uh, anytime I usually put a hole in something, I'll blast some color right on the hole. Figures now you're stuck, huh? All right. Anytime I put a hole in something, I use like the blast and color on there so it looks like something happened to it. Or leaked out of it. That's kind of my little method. And then I just kind of dusted color on everything and just let it fall where it would. It doesn't have to be pretty. I mean, the uglier, the better. And I didn't want just a dirty brown jacket. I mean, I wanted it grungy and filthy. But, uh... You're not really painting the jacket itself, you're just sort of like letting it fall like dirt wood in a dust cloud or when this guy's putting bodies in the ground. So I basically covered it in brown. I went ahead and came back with a gray color, which is a satin charcoal gray, Rust-Oleum 2X. Same thing. I just kind of let the jacket fall. I misted it. Kind of break up the brown a little bit. You can get close and do a little blast here and there or do little holes. Cool. looks like he's dusted just we don't have him completely covered in black and again i would just lay it back and let the overspray fall on him where it will so i was really happy with the effect and then lastly i went back with some light uh is this ivory okay satin ivory silk and then i just stood back and i just kind of dusted everything so it looked like fresh dirt before it turns that dark dark brown color and then I just dusted it, let it fall on the jacket, just kind of missed everything, and I'm happy with it. Like I said, I cut everything out, his sleeves are all ripped open. I think the only last thing I really want to do to his jacket is I got a bunch of uh, felt scraps. I got a bunch of felt scraps I found in the house. What I think I'd like to do is cut a couple of jagged squares, maybe put a couple of patches on his jacket, maybe in an elbow, maybe here and there. Uh, some of this felt is self-stick. What I'll probably do is I'll just cut a little patch out. I'll spray some Super 77 on it. And then I'll go ahead and I've got this uh, stuff I bought from Michael's years ago. It's uh, dimensional fabric paint. So you put your patch on and then you can draw little lines or stitches on there. And it basically glues itself into place. So I think I'm going to throw a couple of patches on him to make it look more ragtag. And then uh, I think his coat will be done. And I'll check on any last minute details you want to do to this guy, which I think I'm pretty well good. But I want to finish up his jacket and I'm going to actually get him in place today uh, and show you guys what he looks like outside with his shovel and everything. So I'm going to do some patches and then we'll come back. Alrighty, so I got a bunch of patches glued up on Mortimer's jacket. I got some up top. I got the red one there. I got the gray one. Uh, I went ahead and heat gun him down. It'll take 20, eh, probably 24 hours for this glue to dry. It's basically a glue. It's a tulip, like I said, a dimensional paint. I'm going to take this stuff, and I'm just going to draw in lines. You guys can do it any way you want. You can do stitches. It'll take about 24 hours to dry. It'll bite right into that felt. It ain't got to be pretty. 
Remember, this is a grimy asshole grave digger. So I'm going to go around as patches and trace. I got gray, I got red. I'm not going to leave these, these bright colors. Once they dry after the fabric paint goes on, I'm going to spray them down with some grit dye and darken them down some. I just want to have a bunch of different dimensional patches on them and give other stuff to stand out. So you can do some patches like this. little lines and just go right over onto his coat all right that's the idea i'm going to get this guy's uh, patches all outlined i'm going to heat gun this and try and set it for a little bit and then i want to go ahead and get his lantern his lantern is basically done i've had this lantern for years this is one of them eight dollar lanterns you find everywhere but i broke the damn ball one year sandblasting it so I put a, a solar light, you get it from Menards, an old solar light didn't work. I just took the ball off of that and slipped it in here, welded some wire to it. Um, it still goes up and tilts down. It's frozen pretty good this year. Because um, what I always do is, oh, on the bottom. Okay, some of my lanterns, I have key light, this guy. I got a, a ball glued into the bottom. It'll kick on for four hours. So once I turn it on, I don't have to think about it. This will be up in Mortimer's hand. Every night at the same time for four hours, this thing will kick on and it'll go off. And I got everything spray painted in the top silver, so it kind of it um, it reflects off of the thing. It looks great. You can see it from like three houses down my street. And when you get on top of them, it'll really show. So you may actually see some glow in his face. So when we get him outside, we get his lantern in hand too. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stitch in all these little patches, and then I'll come back and we'll start getting some clothes on this old boy. Alrighty, so Mortimer is uh, outside. You can see his patches are drying. So I'm going to let his coat sit in here for a little bit. I've got the stakes ready to go and uh, hammer on the ground. Got Mortimer outside laying on the ground right there. I'm going to tap the spikes on the ground right here. And uh, I know what the spikes, I want them to be 12 inches apart. Uh, that's how far the holes are in Mortimer's legs. So I'm going to tap one in. I think we'll stand them about here. Like so. I'm going to put another one 12 inches apart. And because I put PVC in his legs all the way through, he should be able to stand and slide right over these and not tip over. So I'm going to get this one in the ground. I'm going to get his shovel. And we'll put the coat on him, and I'll show you what he looks like all assembled with his lantern in his hand. All right, you guys ready to see Mortimer? I got his crusty old filthy ass standing up. He's good to go. Here's the man. Got his arms on. There's his shovel. Got his lantern in hand. Uh, I think I might eventually do a little pocket watch or something. I gotta have a vest for him eventually. So I might do a little chain with a little pocket watch and I'll just put a little round piece of PVC in there and hook the chain to his pocket. Look like he's got a pocket watch. I got his little feather glued in place. Give you guys a 360. His hand is just kind of grasping the lantern. I will stick a zip tie in there in the winter time and zip tie it to his hand. Um, he looks pretty cool. His coat's kind of blown in the breeze a little bit that we had. His uh, patches look great. I'm just going to darken those down eventually because I got to undress him again anyways when I get his vest. But this is what he looks like 360. I got him on kind of a slant, which I normally wouldn't have him, but uh, I had to work with what I had for today. But I think overall, I'm happy with him, man. He's waterproofed. Um, like I said, his hat, hopefully it'll shed water. He's got his evil grimy face. His lantern will light up and I won't have to touch it. I got one of those little uh, four hour timer lantern lights on the bottom glued in. So I think it looks cool when his coat blows in the breeze. But head to toe, I'm happy with him. An old couch cushion uh, that I cut for his uh, a handkerchief for his mouth but he's in there man and he'll be in the middle of the graveyard keeping fools out putting bodies in holes so hope you guys enjoyed this man if you if you dig it i got some more for you we got a whole bunch more me and the, my brothers in a trio of terror we're building every day and adding more projects and i'll probably throw a little more on him before halloween so if you guys like this, leave me a like. Go check out my brothers in the Trio of Terror, Vic Springston, and the Weird Kids Show channel. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Get him, Mortimer.